What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Vikings Now by Chad Sports. My name is Patrick Seatman. Is Kyler Murray potentially going to be headed to the Minnesota Vikings? Well, in the latest mock draft dropped by ESPN's Mike Tannenbaum, who is also a former NFL GM, he had the Minnesota Vikings trading the 11th pick and a third rounder to the Arizona Cardinals for none other than quarterback Kyler Murray. I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts on this and also kind of diving into his quotes, explaining his reasoning why on today's show and then also at the back half of today's show. Charlie Walters uh, gave his contract projection and what he anticipates for Justin Jefferson. It's actually not as big as a, uh, as big of a deal as I thought it was going to be. So we're going to touch on that at the later half of today's show. But let's just dive right into what Mike Tannenbaum had to say about the Vikings potentially trading for Kyler Murray. Because obviously we know the Vikings have been in the thick of things of trading up in this year's draft class to go land their quarterback. Well, what if they just go another route and they go trade for an already proven QB in Kyler Murray? So this is what he had to say. So he says, so here's my proposition to clear some cap space for the Cardinals. Because obviously Kyler Murray's got a big contract. He said, officially to start the J.J. McCarthy era in Arizona and it's going to fix the Vikings QB issue. He says, in my mind, the number 11 pick for Murray straight up is too rich and number 23. So Minnesota's other first rounder on its own is not enough. So I'm attaching that third rounder to level it out. It's similar to what the Cardinals did during the 2022 draft when they traded their first round pick number 23 to Baltimore for receiver Marquise Brown and a third rounder. This is what he had to say from the Viking side of things. He says, from the Viking standpoint, everything I said earlier about Murray's durability still matters, but he's cheaper and younger than Kirk Cousins and are younger than Kirk Cousins would have to be re-signed and gives them a chance to compete this season rather than rebuild. And immediately when I saw this kind of report or this mock draft come out, I just thought this was kind of a Tannenbaum going for clicks here because I just don't think there's any chance in the world Kyler Murray ends up in Minnesota. And mainly just from, you know, I'll take this from the Cardinal side of things here first. I just think they're in a position where, you know, they already have their quarterback and I don't think they would want to risk you know, drafting a guy at number four and trading away a franchise quarterback in Kyler Murray, when also they could just sit there at number four and take a Brock Bowers, take a Marvin Harrison Jr. and give Kyler some real weapons on the outside. I just don't see it from their side of things. And then even from the Viking side of things, I'm a big fan of Kyler Murray. I think he's honestly gone kind of underrated amongst NFL quarterbacks as it is right now. I think he's a top 10 guy. I think he's got, you know, big time to potential. I think he's a guy that, you know, could be a winning quarterback on a Super Bowl, you know, winning team. But I just think with where Minnesota's at right now and how they've kind of set themselves up, like number one, yes, they want to get that young rookie quarterback just because they want to be able to develop him and everything. But I think the number one reason for Minnesota here is to get a quarterback on a rookie deal. And, you know, it's kind of like you just moved off Kirk Cousins because you didn't want to pay him. So now you're going to go trade for Kyler Murray and his contract. It just didn't really make too, too much sense to me. Uh, funny enough, in this mock draft, he actually did have the Vikings selecting Jerzon Newton at 23 uh, in this draft. So like, honestly, if you just look at it from a little bird's eye view here, if the Vikings walked away draft night with Kyler Murray and Jerzon Newton, I wouldn't be obviously too upset about it. But I just think, think it is incredibly unlikely because you know, the Vikings, this could be just a massive smoke screen. This could all just be gamesmanship by them, you know, how they're kind of manipulating the media right here. But if there is any truth to any of the reports or rumors that have came out, they want a rookie quarterback, whether that's Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, or Jaden Daniels. Like, they want that guy where they can kind of hone in and sandpaper his game and really treat him, you know, as their own in Minnesota. And if you would just go trade for Kyler Murray, like, yeah, the Vikings would be much better next season. Like, the Vikings would be a wagon heading in the next year. But, you know, talking about years moving forward, like, I just don't think that's what the Vikings want to do with this plan. Because especially, let's just say you trade for Kyler and the Vikings have a couple seven-win seasons here and it doesn't end up working out. I mean, Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi, they're both out the door. They're both getting fired. But, you know, this is nothing against, you know, Kyler and his game. I love who he is as a quarterback. I think he's going to be an absolute stud. Um, for the remainder of his career in the NFL, but just where the Minnesota Vikings are at right now, I just don't really think it, you know, it makes too, too much sense because I think the number one thing that's really, 
enticing the Vikings front office in trading up for a rookie quarterback is because he would be on a rookie deal and they could obviously, you know, make him, you know, their own. And I think there's something special to that, you know, drafting a quarterback in the NFL, having him develop in your system and have him kind of be, you know, only with your franchise for the next 10, 15 years and really just seeing, you know, what whoever this rookie quarterback could turn into. So I thought this was Tannebaum kind of, you know, going for clicks on this one. I get it. It was a fun idea. You know, we're also probably going to eventually have to talk about Justin Herbert here on the channel. I've been kind of putting that off, but Kyler Murray is the latest quarterback to be connected to the Minnesota Vikings. So before we dive into the Justin Jefferson, um, potential contract extension and those numbers on that. I got to ask you guys, would you trade for Kyler Murray? If this was the trade that went down the 11th pick and a third rounder for Kyler Murray, would you do it? Give me a T for trade or a P for pass down in the comment section. And I also want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Prize Picks. If you guys head to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use promo code CLNS, we'll give you guys a first deposit match up to $100. Even though football season that is not going on right now, March Madness is starting again this Thursday. NBA action is heating up with the playoff push happening right now. And obviously the playoffs are less than a month away. So if you guys want to get in on the fun, download the Prize Picks app, use promo code CLNS when you're making your first deposit, and they'll match you no matter what it is up to $100. Get hooked up today. It's really simple. You pick more or you pick less on two to six stat projections and you guys can start seeing the cash roll in today click the link it's in the comment section and description of today's show but let's dive into what charlie walters had to say he's been a beat recorder covering the minnesota vikings for a very very long time and he's pretty tapped in and he says that he is anticipating that jefferson will receive a five-year deal worth over 150 million dollars but with only around $75 million guaranteed. And he, the quote he said was, the Vikings drafting a quarterback will be very affordable for three years, allowing the team the anticip anticipated $150 million deal for Justin Jefferson. And it kind of gets me back to my points with Kyler Murray. It's like, you know, the Vikings are not going to bring in Kyler with his massive contract because of the Jefferson contract extension that is coming. And then also next offseason, you're going to have to pay Christian Darisol, whatever that contract will be, assuming that's around $25 you know, million dollars per year. But, you know, it's just like you're looking at the offense. Like you got the highest paid tight end right now in TJ Hawkinson. Jefferson's going to be the highest paid receiver. Darisol is going to be one of the highest paid left tackles in the league. You, and then, you know, eventually down the line, Jordan Addison's going to get that contract extension. Like it just doesn't make any sense for the Vikings to go and trade for, yes, a great quarterback in Kyler Murray. But considering his contract, I just don't think it, you know, fits the Vikings timeline right now. But speaking back to the Jefferson contract talk here, you know, I've said it, I would like to go for an extension with Jefferson where it'd be longer years and maybe it's not the same amount of average annual salary per year. Like if the Vikings could somehow pull off a six year, $180 million deal, let's just say 110 of it is guaranteed. I think that would be a sweet deal for the Vikings because, you know, the salary cap in the NFL, it's going to continue and continue to go up. And if you could somehow, you know, if we're looking back on it, you know, three years from now and we're like, oh, Jefferson's only making 30, 33 million dollars per year. I think that could be a great deal. And, you know, I think with where Jefferson's at and how special he's been in Minnesota, I'm not saying it's like a blank check type of situation where you just offer him, you know, whatever he wants, because there obviously is a salary cap. You got to take that in consideration. But, you know, I think he's proven himself where I would feel comfortable giving him a very, very long term deal because, you know, yes, he had that hamstring injury last season. But besides that, he's never been injured. And, you know, just off the field, too. He's never shown any signs of, you know, being a diva, you know, making it about him. He's always seemed like a team guy and he's always seemed like he wants to win no matter what. And I actually respected Jefferson early on this offseason when he says, I'm not signing that contract extension unless I know the long term plan at quarterback. I agree with him because if I was in his spot, a young up and coming receiver and I think I'm the best in the game, I'm probably not signing a contract extension with the team unless I know what their plan is. Because as a receiver, you need somebody obviously throwing you the football. And if you would just, you know, let's just say the Vikings would keep on, you know, putting a band-aid over an open wound and keep bringing in Sam Darnold's, you know, all these different types of bridge quarterbacks without having a true plan here for the future. I probably wouldn't sign either, but with the reports coming out, it seems Jefferson's been very, very involved with this quarterback kind of a, 
you know, discussion here and what the Vikings plan is, which I think the Vikings are handling it the best way possible. That's how I would want them to handle it is you keep 18, you keep the best player on your roster involved on this whole situation. And I think it's going to go down where, you know, I don't think there's going to be a contract extension before draft night, but I think it's going to be like the week or two after once the Vikings trade up in the draft, get whoever they want to get, whether it's McCarthy, May, Daniels, whoever ends up being the quarterback in Minnesota, and then Jefferson signs that contract extension. And then it's those two building that connection over the next four years with Addison, with uh, TJ Hawkinson. I think it could, you know, really, really end up working out. But I would send Jefferson a six year, $180 million deal. You know, you could figure out the guarantees however the way you want. But that's what I would do lock him up long term. You're going to get the next six years of the best wide receiver in the National Football League. And the thing that's so scary about him, man, he had 1,400 yards in his rookie year, and he has gotten better and better each and every season and I just can't wait to see what he's going to do next year you know even if it's Sam Darnold throwing in the football for the entire 17 game slate next year he is still going to have a monster season and you're still going to feel his impact and I just can't wait to see number 18 hitting the gritty in that zone uh, again next season but that was today's show I want to talk about the ESPN mock draft where Mike Tannenbaum put out a I think it was a ludicrous, you know, mock draft. I just did not get it at all. It doesn't make sense for, honestly, either side. Um, I just think he was going for clicks on that one. But, and then also, we got the update around Justin Jefferson's contract. So, thank you guys so much for watching. See you all next time. Skull Vikes.